My name is Chris, and I'm an avid runner. My wife and I live full-time in our Airstream, traveling North America in search of great running trails and pathways. I document both the highs and lows of these routes so that other travelers might enjoy what I call running on the road. This week's run is a section of the George S. Mickelson Trail, located in the Black Hills National Forest of South Dakota. The full trail is just over 100 miles, from the town of Deadwood to Edgemont, South Dakota. The section I ran is 6.72 miles, from the parking area of the Crazy Horse Monument to the town of Custer which fortunately has several RV campgrounds. Now you can see from the cross-section grid here that this trail has a nice slope from 5,800 feet mean sea level down to about 5,300 feet mean sea level. I chose to run downhill because I wanted to end up in Custer at the campground. If you're looking for more of a challenge, you can run the opposite way going uphill. The trail is a wide dirt path until you reach the town of Custer, where it turns into asphalt. This trail is very well maintained, and it's good for trail bikes. There are a few passive road crossings, but these are mostly private service roads, so there is no real traffic issue. The initial part of the trail follows US Highway 385. It then makes a left-hand turn towards Buckhorn Mountain. Here, there is a pretty good distance from the trail to the highway, so the noise pollution is fairly low, and there is a lot of green space along the way. The trail does have several mile markers, which helps keep your pace and your awareness of your location. This trail is also a combination of several trailheads that extends north-south, and most of them have parking, trail maps, bike repair stations, and other support facilities. The trail does eventually move away from following the highway and journeys off into the Black Hills. Any traffic noise that you had on the first section will melt away. And you start seeing more rock formations, wooded areas, and bridges. I will note that a lot of this land is privately owned, so you want to make sure that you stay on the trail. I also recommend looking at the weather very closely before making your run. It's hard to see here, but this is actually small hail coming down. Fortunately, it only lasted for about 15 minutes, and the trail did not collect a lot of water. You will know that you're close to Custer when the trail turns into asphalt, and you'll start to see more residential areas. You will also start seeing more passive crossings, and these are public roads, which means you may see more traffic depending on the day of time. Eventually, you will come to the 16A which leads into Custer. There is an active crossing here, which is nice because this road can have a lot of traffic. Once you cross, the asphalt trail picks up again, and you will follow the 16A until it reaches town, and in my case, the campground. In summary, this is a downhill trail through a beautiful section of the Black Hills National Forest. The trail is mostly dirt and pea gravel, with about a mile of asphalt towards the end. The trail has markings, maps, and signposts to help keep you on the trail. This is a wonderful scenic run, and the distance from the highway keeps the noise pollution at bay. There are numerous trailheads along the way that offer parking and support stations. And this trail is safe and accessible during the day. The road crossings through most of the trail have no traffic, until you get to Custer, which will require some caution. I'll be posting these videos once a week as we travel through North America. Please comment below. I'd like to hear if you've been on this section of the trail or on another section through the Black Hills. And I'll see you on the next Running on the Road.